Only in Washington can you have precipitation falling out of the sky and sun at the same time. Weather's ridiculous around here. So today we're working on the 2017 ridge line. Gonna do a transmission service on it. I honestly don't know what the factory recommended interval is, but since we've been towing the trailer with it last summer, I've decided to go ahead and do it now. So something I learned last week, the Gen 2 Ridgeline does in fact have a uh, transmission filter. It's an inline filter, I'm assuming in one of the cooler lines. Um, from what I understand, this is a commonly used filter in a lot of different Hondas and Acuras, which is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and change that. I probably won't ever change it again. but. Most of the wear is going to come in the uh, initial break-in of the transmission. You're going to get a lot of extra particles in there. And we got four quarts of DW-1 fluid from Honda. I'm not sure what's special about that, but special to the transmission nonetheless. And also they taped a drain plug gasket on there. That filter, well, I don't think I could show you where the filter's at right now with the front being up on ramps, but I'm going to go ahead and take this plastic under tray off that goes from one side to the other. It's got a couple of uh, clips that you got to pop out, and I think it's got some 10 millimeter bolts. And I've had it out once before when I was putting LEDs in the driving lights. That filter is about straight up. Get back a little ways. That filter is about straight up from right here. Not very high. You can see if you look around the corner, you can see the, the lines. I know it's kind of dark and I don't have a flashlight on me, but we'll get a better look at that filter when I take this cover off. So that'll be the next step. We'll get the cover off, get the filter loose, and then uh, get it draining. A real quick overview of the tools that we use on this job. So you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. I've got like a one inch extension quarter drive ratchet. This will be used for both the filter clamp and also taking that underbelly plastic panel off. Uh, a pair of pliers to use uh, undo the spring clamps on the filter. Phillips screwdriver is going to be for two screws on the plastic underbelly. Small flat bladed screwdriver for undoing the plastic rivets on the underbelly tray. And those are reusable by the way, so try not to break them. And a half inch drive ratchet with a half to three eighths adapter to get the drain plug out of the transmission. I use this to break it loose if you're going to use the half drive to Put the drain plug back in, choke up on it quite a ways because it doesn't need to be that tight. And also, uh, I used my old school ramps on the front to get a little extra working room underneath. Use a jack and jack stands. If you use a jack, it goes without saying, please use jack stands so you don't squish yourself. All right, so we cheated a little bit and went and got the little Milwaukee. Let me get these bolts out of here a little bit quicker. These have a little shoulder on them so that you can't squash all this plastic stuff. So I'm kind of setting these down in an orientation to where I'll put them back where they go. OK, 
Okay, so that's got all the 10 millimeter head of bolts out of there. And I don't know why, but uh, I guess it just didn't want the heads getting torn off. Right in these corners of this subframe, they've got these goofy little Phillips headed screws. Like I was saying, if you ever want to work on your driving lights or change the bulbs or switch to LEDs like we did, you'll want to take this cover off. Come on now. Little plastic rivets. So there's quite a hodgepodge of different fasteners. Holding this under tray on. All right, so we're down to the last two. These don't have slots in them. I have no idea why. Don't stab yourself. I think what I used last time on these was a pair of diagonal cutters. Got that panel out of the way. Okay. Not the most ideal light, but that is the tranny filter right there. Coming off of this hose off the bottom of the case right here, or pipe I should say, up to a piece of hose. It's got some huge spring clamps on it. And then there's a bracket with a bolt in it and that bracket holds the filter in the correct orientation. So it is a directional filter and it looks like they've got it uh, somewhat Murphy proofed so that you can't uh, put the filter in backwards. So let's go ahead and get that filter changed and then I think we'll drain the case. So what I'm thinking is if we take the bolt out of the clamp, it's a half shell clamp. So you take one bolt out and then it hinges open. Then we can, uh, after that we can pull that filter down and have a little easier access at it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of light shining up in there. I dropped one of my fluorescent lights down in from above. I did verify the bolt that holds this clamp together is a 10 millimeter head. Let's see if we can get this up on there. There we go. Okay, so here's part of the clamp that holds the filter. Here's the bolt that holds that clamp. So we can see now the filter is loose. Got some pretty beefy spring clamps on it so what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull the hose off here so that I can pull the filter up and out through right here I'm gonna take the filter out down from right here and then change it and then we'll put it back together in the uh, 
reverse of disassembly, as they say. All right, so we got him pushed back. Just need to get the hose knocked loose. Usually just give them a little twist with the pliers, but don't squeeze too hard. A lot of times these transmission cooler lines can be pretty stiff. Got a little fluid dripping. So that's good because it'll help break that hose loose. Ah, oh, that's all she needed was a little bit of fluid to get in between the tube and the and the hose. So changing this filter, I did. I haven't found anything online about changing this filter at all. Um, I don't think it's going to be any. Uh, wait for this damn truck to go by. The fluid loss from changing this filter, I don't think it's going to be a real huge significance to uh, the quantity listed in the manual, which is 3.3 quarts of that DW-1. I may just add a, a tenth more to cover the filter change, but like I said, I don't know if that's really necessary or not. Get her to finish dripping here. Try not to fling oil all over. Let's see if we can transfer this right out the, right out the front. So now I've got the filter hanging down. I'll grab my pliers and we'll go ahead and pull the filter off after I fight with this clamp. So just a couple little squeaks with the pliers there. And we'll slide that hose off. Of course, I gotta take the short piece of hose. Gotta take this short piece of hose off and transfer it to the new filter. I don't even know if y'all are in frame still. Gotta take this short piece of hose off and transfer it to the new filter. And then we'll be ready for a reassembly. Of course, I don't have my knife on me, which is very, very unlike me. We're almost off of there. They had that hose bottomed out on there. So the short piece of hose goes on the side of the nipple that's closest to the crimp body. So here's our new filter. 
guys can go on here like that. We'll put this clamp back where he goes. Might be being a little bit anal, but I always put my spring clamps back where they were in the rubber. Alright, so this guy slides right on there. is reinstalled. And we are ready to put this guy back in. So I'm going to go ahead and move the drain pan out of the way a second. Those will slip back on to this pipe. It does have a shoulder on it. Clamp is reinstalled, so all of our clamps are reinstalled. Hose clamps, that is. Now it's time to put the clamp back together that holds the filter in place. what I am doing. Now the fun part. I get to put the bolt back in blind. Here's our 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, that should be started. <clears throat> I know there's no real good place to put the camera. We're going to run this bolt back down. Light little torque there. And the filter change is done. Once again, that's him right there. Clamp. 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 This clamp and then that clamp right there and then obviously the clamp for the filter body it's pretty easy that's not too bad probably almost takes longer to take that plastic belly panel off but let's move on to draining the fluid we'll go ahead and do the fluid drain get that done before putting the uh, plastic 
cover back on. So this might be a complete waste of time as far as uh, thought process here. But since I've got the front of the ridge line up on ramps, once I uncork this drain plug right here, I'm probably going to take my floor jack, go around to the rear axle, and jack the back of the truck up so that the, the Honda is at least sitting level. So we can get as much of that old fluid out as possible on the, on the drain process. So I was reading and I guess some Hondas, I don't remember exactly which models, um, they do what's called a three times drain and fill. But uh, everything that I've seen and read and can find about the red ridge lines, at least the second generation ridge lines for sure, is that it does not require a three times drain and fill. It's just a one time drain and fill. And I'm pretty sure that my parts guy, he would have told me, hey, you need more than four quarts of oil to do this job if there was a, in fact, a three times drain and fill. So let's get this draining and we'll uh, move on with this project. Alright, so I went and got a half inch drive ratchet with a half to three eighths adapter to get this plug out because they're usually pretty tight. Okay, so now we got to be ready for the shower of fluid. I would rather not cover the camera in oil. So we will pick the drain pan up for the initial dump. So it kind of goes without saying, I guess I didn't mention this, uh, our Honda has 30,000 miles on it, a thousand of those are towing, and uh, transmission works great. When it was in for service last week to do the engine oil, and yes I know I'm more than capable of changing my own engine oil, but I gotta say having the Honda garage do it. I can barely get the supplies for within 10 bucks of what they charge to do the whole job for me and they get rid of the oil, so win-win. So we can see on the plug, fair amount of schmutz on there, but totally normal. It's like a paste. There's probably a whole bunch of that in the filter. So we'll get this totally cleaned off before we put it back in. Like I said earlier, I got a new drain plug washer. So we'll change him out. Okay, so I'm gonna go floor jack the back of the truck up so it's level. We'll let this finish draining and then we'll get set to do the fill. So I went ahead and jacked up the rear axle. Try to get as level as I could. You're not going to get every last drop out of the transmission, but as flat as the bottom as that transmission case was, I figured the more level it is, the more drained it'll be. Okay, since this transmission is going to sit here and drip for another five minutes, figured we'll go ahead and put the underbelly pan back on and get that out of the way because that is clear of the drain plug. That'll be one less thing I don't have to scramble to get done later. Of course half the battle is getting this stuff lined back up again. Okay. 
Let's go. These guys started. So any of these bolts that have a shoulder on it are there to keep you from squashing the plastic to death. When you put these back in, make sure that it is not uh, going to cookie cut the plastic. You want to make sure that it's seated properly before torquing it up or it will tear the plastic up even worse than if the shoulder wasn't there. Just some small little details. So we got a couple of different filling implements. Went over to the local Wally World. Got a couple of different implements that may work because the transmission fill tube is way down inside the engine bay on this thing. Almost down to the transmission level. So we're going to see if we can get one of these two to work. And uh, try and get the camera jammed down there so you can see where it's at. I know a lot of you probably already know where it's at, but I didn't know where it was at. Hell, I thought this was one of those sealed transmissions that didn't even have a uh, dipstick. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to fall to my death. Okay. So right in the middle of the camera picture, right here is the loop for the dipstick. So let me see if I can get him pulled out of there. Find my towel. And here he is. He's just a short little bugger. So maybe you guys that are more well versed in the Honda Ridgeline transmissions can tell me. Um, I believe this is not a standard conventional automatic transmission. I don't think it's a DCT transmission either, but what do I know? I don't know if this is to be done in park uh, or if you can check at any time, check it with the engine off. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to put the 3.3 quarts back in there and then see where that lands us on the dipstick and uh, adjust as necessary. All I have or show is hot between two dots so what I think I'm gonna do is use a combination of the red funnel which I now have stamped, stabbed in the tube and the hose filler. This hose filler has an on off valve. See, it's kind of hard to, I can't do it one handed, but you twist the yellow piece after you've screwed it onto the bottle. Okay, so we've screwed the filler onto our bottle. We can turn it upside down, and in theory it shouldn't leak all over the place. To 
before we turn the valve on. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. So we'll get these 3.3 quarts in there and then go from there. We got our 3.3-ish quarts in there. I got the bottle mark for when it was upside down. This on-off valve works freaking amazing. So what I was doing was I was feeding this transmission funnel with the on-off valve filler off the bottle. I don't think we spilled a drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the uh, dipstick back in there and we'll fire it up, get it down off the ramps and check for leaks. Okay, got that guy back in. Just got back from a trip around the block. So if I'm understanding what um, I've read online is correct with these Honda transmissions in the Ridgeline, I think it's first and second generation. If any of this doesn't make sense or it's incorrect, please correct me in the comments below. But what I understand is um, unlike a lot of older conventional automatic transmissions with these, you want to get it up to operating temperature park it on level ground, shut it off, and then you check it shortly thereafter with the engine off, which is not what I'm used to. So we are warm, we're actually pretty hot, maybe not fully operating temperature. So we're gonna take the dipstick out, clean it, and we'll stab it back in there, seat it all the way, Pull it. Sometimes it can be kind of tricky to see this. If the light's not just right. You'll see that a lot where one side of the stick will be dry and one side of the stick will be wet beyond where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna try and do it one more time. I think it needs a little bit more though. I'm gonna go ahead and put in another tenth. I suspect it may need just a splash more because of the filter change. So let me get that done and then we'll see where we're at. So what we did this time for the level check is went ahead and let it run until it got fully it they say you can just have it parked in the driveway um, and run it until the electric fans come on which is what I did even though I'd driven her around a little bit earlier I only went around the block maybe about a mile so now we've let it run until the fans kicked on and we'll see where the level is at I've uh, since added two tenths of a quart more since when I checked it initially. And I'm reading that these dipsticks are notoriously hard to read because it slimes the heck out of one side of the stick and the other stick stays dry or low. But you always want to read the low side because that should be your true level. So if you're going to do your filter and the fluid level at the same time, you're probably going to have to mess around with the level a little bit more than just 3.3 quarts. I'm doing everything in my power to not overfill it. I'm going to put in another tenth. 
and then uh, it should be happy. So I'll get that squared away and we should be done with this. Um, like I said, any of my crappy videos, if you guys uh, have any questions, you know where to put them. And uh, I think from here on out, I, like I said earlier in the video, I probably won't change the filter ever again, but if we're gonna be towing the trailer with this thing, with the Honda, I'll probably change the transmission fluid once a year. It's easy and it's not that expensive. So hopefully this helps. I didn't see any other videos on changing that filter, so I wanted to kind of do a video on changing the filter even more so than the oil, because I think there are a few other videos out there on changing the transmission fluid. Thanks for watching, and like I said, hopefully this helps.